Welcome to the Cosmic Awakening Show. I'm Michelle Walling, your host, and today I have some advanced information I'm going to be sharing with you that I hope will aid you in your spiritual awakening. If this is your first time tuning into the show, you can find out more about me on my websites, michellewalling.com, howtoexitthematrix.com, and cosmicstarseeds.com. Today I have a returning friend and guest, Sonia. Sonia is an intuitive visionary, holding a direct connection with the divine since childhood. She's been blessed with pinpoint visionary skills, plus enhanced spiritual gifts and abilities. Her path has now led her from being behind the scenes and into the public, focusing on blessing the people of the earth with pure love. Assisting with delivering the understanding required to find truth and knowledge is one of her missions. Sonia's extra sensory gifts will now be shared in areas directed by the Divine. Now, I've had three interviews with Sonia that you can access on my show's website, CosmicAwakeningShow.com. Now, Sonia is a guest speaker at our upcoming Cosmic Convergence Conference, March 2nd through 3rd, here in Sarasota, Florida, where you can also get to meet and hear Greg Prescott from N5D.com. We also have Maria Bethencourt as a speaker on Friday night. She'll be doing a workshop with Starseeds. Now, while you're in Sarasota, if you want to come here for this Friday night and all-day Saturday conference, you can take advantage of the 99.9% Quartz Crystal Healing Sand Beaches, and you can attend a free public drum circle every Sunday here in Sarasota on the main beach at Siesta Key. It's about an hour before sunset. Now this year's conference will include two workshops to make sure everyone gets personalized life coaching and healing so that by the time you leave you have all of the codes, you know what you're supposed to be doing, you know how we're going to be shifting to the new earth, and you know what you can focus on from now until then. You can find tickets for this conference at the show's website, CosmicAwakeningShow.com. Now, let's get right to our guest. Sonia, welcome back to the Cosmic Awakening Show. Hi, Michelle. I'm happy to be here. Well, I am so thrilled that you're coming to Florida and we're going to be meeting in person with the special people who are um, being called to come to our conference here and you'll get to stay with me in my home. We've met once in person. We've spent hours and hours upon hours working together on the phone. So this is a real joy for me um, to bring it all together. Oh, for me as well. I'm so excited about all of the above. What I'm looking forward to is for people to see our dynamic together as we work because both of us are embodying our divine consciousness at the same time as being here in a physical body and me being Michelle, you being Sonia, but we're also embodying it like our higher self steps in and steps out. And when we are physically next to each other together in this conference doing this we have a workshop planned for Saturday afternoon. Uh, between your ability to see and my ability to know, people coming to the conference will have an opportunity to talk about any block, any problem that they're having, and we should be able to uh, assist them. Won't that be great? Oh, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be absolutely amazing. At one time you were telling me um, when you um, were a clinical anesthetist, is that how you say it? <laughs> esthetician. <laughs> um, you well, it's aesthetics, but esthetician, it's, you can use the different terminology. Yeah, um, well, you, you had some abilities coming online then uh, that, that we think we're going to be able to, to use. Um, and when you worked with the doctors and everything, you were able to literally, there's some superpowers that people um, are going to be coming into that you've already had. A while back and you just they're kind of like muscles you got to keep using them or else they're not available to you but I feel like you're going to be able to use x-ray vision uh, perhaps being able to make yourself really small uh, and basically go into someone's universe or their body 
and find out, you know, go in there and see and look. We don't know what's going to happen, actually, um, as when we get together like this awesome duo that we are. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen. But between your ability to see and my ability to know, we'll be able to, um, to, that's what I do in life coaching is be able to tune into someone and know what they need to hear. It's not always what they want to hear, but uh, what they need to hear. So I'm really looking forward to that. Yes, I am too. That, uh, that knowing also gives you the understanding of what everything actually is and how to accept it to use each and every aspect of everything that takes you to a new and exciting place where you just think, well, maybe someone else can do that. No, everybody is capable of doing it. We all have it. And we're just going to come together and try to be the assistant on guiding them to their own direction. Well, one thing that you have verified that I have been sharing with people is that through my voice, I share um, codes that people, when they listen to my shows, they take in these codes and they become, you know, they're, they're dormant inside their DNA. And when they reach a certain level of consciousness or when they reach a certain level where they need those codes, they're shared with them so that they can activate themselves to the next level. It's not like I'm doing anything for them, really. Uh, but it, it, it is kind of because I agreed to carry a cert certain codes for humanity and I'm not the only one that carries um, all of these codes, but there's a lot of other light workers that carry certain levels of codes, and that's what we all agree to do on the planet. So not only, you know, do they get it from my voice, but when we're in person, I feel like there's this dynamic, um, maybe a whole new level of codes that I carry that by working with two or more people like you and myself together, we're going to literally be pretty much together the whole conference, bouncing right. ideas off of one, one another. Um, people will be able to, um, to receive a whole new level of codes. That's kind of what I'm feeling. It's just intuitive. What do you think about that? Well, I totally agree. Um, you know, the air in which we each reside has become you know, an outward expansion of the polarity of the inside um, just like the planet what is above is below what is below is above it's um, that polarity starts matching and uh, flowing together to make up an individual and in that individual as we all cross paths we have that one thing in common which is that knowledge that was you know the foundation of our actual existence once that knowledge is becomes understanding that's when they you know each individual starts coming into their own truth platform and it's absolutely incredible how two people can come together and assist that third that's looking for their path and all of a sudden it it changes their very existence because your existence is your understanding and your knowledge yeah that's what i want to talk about next it's not that i'm you know, such a special person that, you know, I carry these codes. I just have an agreement to be here and to carry codes. And exactly as my consciousness has started to expand. And as I have, uh, before I met you in September of last year, I had worked on embodying my higher self, connecting with my higher being, my oversoul level outside of this creation, as well as, you know, source itself and bringing, bringing more of that, um, consciousness here into the present and um then after you and i met um i feel like that that was all planned and there was another level that i began to decide that i wanted to step into the first level was stepping into the father's shoes whatever whatever that meant to whatever that word father means to other people to me i i stepped into the father of this creation's shoes and i said okay I'm gonna st I'm gonna stand here for a while and let's see what that means to embody that and I switched over as well to stepping into the mother of this creation's shoes and before I you know really get into what I experienced um, let's talk about the the father mother polarity of creation and 
what it means to embody that as a human being here and how that's going to affect um, our reality. Well, I've always called that higher aspect, you know, my father. Um, the visions I had, it was my way of interpreting exactly what was going on in my little world. Um, then I came into realizing that each individual calls that person something else. You know, there's so many different religions. We kind of touched base on this in the last interview. So it's it's coming into finding who that voice is. That Everyone has that voice. Um, when someone says, oh, well, I don't hear this or I don't hear that. Well, who, who's talking to you? Who, who, is, who is that little voice in your head that tells you turn left and not right or turn right and not left or, you know, go, keep going. You're not quite there yet. There's that little voice, just you put an, uh, a name to it, a familiar name, something, and then that name may change, you know, periodically and becomes someone else. But that is that Christ consciousness that's leading and guiding you, that you have actually put an identity on that, you know, feels good to you, that you trust, someone that you trust. They're, they're, we all have that person whether they want to call it their higher self, their their God, their their father, their mother, um, then the different aspects of that creator, you know, um, can just go in an infinite, and it's it's, it's an infinite amount of um, uh, aspects that can become whatever you need it to be in each moment. Yeah, when I started stepping into um, the the male polarity or aspect of this creation, I um, what I mean by that is I would literally say, okay, now I am going to play Father God because mm -hmm. I can. I mean, I am. That's right. I'm an aspect of Source, and so as Source split itself up into pieces to go out and experience, it made Oversouls, and these Oversouls. Uh, split themselves up into creator gods and goddesses. The creator gods um, created a female version of themselves, split them, them itself up and on down the line. And um, so as I stepped into the father's shoes or the male aspect creator shoes, basically I could see how the patriarchal dominance was you know the prop one of the problems here the overbalance of the masculine and the underappreciation of the feminine and I began to own it I began to say that's know, right well I look at I would look at it and see it look at it meaning I would uh, think about it think about all the things that are you know the struggles that women have um, and the overcompensation that some women have by being over dominant and being over controlling uh, and being completely in fear because of what's in our cellular memory. Exactly. Those, the, those two words own it. That's those two words are what brought me to the understanding that I have today. It was that moment that, okay, well, I've had father, you know, since I was born. Um, but just sitting just in, that particular father's seat also kept me from understanding what the visions were, what the, you know, the different things that I had experienced and all the different multi dimensions, how things were manifesting right in front of my face and I was tripping over it. All of these different things that had happened just, you know, it, it's an everyday life for me as you've come to understand, getting to know me uh, a little bit better. But I had to see that if God is everything or, you know, who, whatever you want to call, you know, it, it's not limited to just my version. It's never limited to just my version. So I always try to make sure that when I'm talking with someone, they understand that it's, you know, God as a whole or creator as a whole has these different aspects. But within those aspects, there's distortion. Where'd the distortion come from? I could not wrap my mind around the fact that the God that I know, you know, if he's everything, why am I seeing all these horrible things out here in front of my face? And why have some of these things happened to me and my family and, and, you know, things that we don't feel 
are, are divine. And the only way I could understand the difference between the creation mode and the transformation mode was to actually step into that other seat that, you know, who would want to do that? Uh, it was very devastating for me, you know, several hours of weeping because when you own that position, you're owning all the destruction and it hurt in my, oh my gosh, my heart hurt. Remember I called you that day. It was absolutely horrible. It was just, oh my God, did I do that? Did I do that? Oh my gosh. But that in itself took me to an expanded, it literally expanded the left side of my brain to a point to where I could understand how there had to be an alter ego of God to have gotten out of that one single cell, that one atom, that one, spelled either way, A-D-A-M or A-T-O-M, that's the science and the spirit. Either way you look at it in any aspect of anything, that had to occur in order for us to be actually not sitting on each other's lap in a little bitty round circle without identities. Well, we're not, I'm not saying by explaining this that everyone needs to stand into creator mode. I'm just saying that between you and I, this, I'm sharing what we have, the, the work that we've done together to come to the understanding uh, that we have. And a lot of this uh, final understanding will be shared at our conference. Uh, I'll, we'll be recording it, but there'll be some some real magic <laughs> happening that you. Yes, that, really that's just the exercise that worked for me. Yes, um, it's so it's I like a it's it. like a tool to use. <laughs> so I tried it, and I had <laughs> I had some horrible experiences as well. Um, higher self could be um, you know one of the aspects of the of the creator of this reality. You know, kind of like, I don't, they're not really lower aspects. They're just, they're pieces or parts of the denser. They're, they're in a denser vibration and they have knowledge and experience, but they don't have the total uh, picture of the, the matrix that we're in, the reality that we're in. It's a holographic reality and it can, it is unfolding uh, from a program and it is um, the parts that we're creating with it, we're creating as a human connected to this matrix. And as we are connected to this matrix, we are co-creating our what we see, hear, feel, taste, touch. Um, and part of the, the DNA that has been, uh, I guess you could call it turned off or not been accessible to us in the etheric realms uh, because of the vibrational frequency that we've been existing in has been the sixth sense or the ability to not only know and realize that you're creating what you're seeing and experiencing, but also that you can change that creation. And that's what the angelic people who are here, the star seeds, the light workers, that's what we came here to do. So when you know, in my show, I've been talking about transfer, transforming yourself, connecting with your higher self, doing your healing work, all the things that have led us to where we are right now. And that is literally understanding the creation and changing the reality. So um, as I was standing in father's shoes, I, um, I began seeing things in my reality change. And the synchronicities were absolutely amazing. I could literally see my signature on everything in my reality. Mm -hmm. And um, situations would start to happen. And I didn't consciously know that I created the situation. But then it, it would unfold and I would go, oh my gosh, I just created that. And this was like um, an accelerated learning school to see what I, what I still held inside of my cellular DNA that had not been addressed. Right. Also, I created, um, because I chose to stand in creator's shoes, I somehow subconsciously created um, co-creations with other people that would enact plays that would show them what they are still hanging on to. So exactly. whoever was in my reality was going to get a double dose. <laughs> right. Right, right. What That's how it works. Yeah. What kind of other things can you add to that? To that. Well, my biggest uh, quest, I guess, 
on this <laughs> that little adventure I took was, you know, that we all want that we all want what we have described as the good the the good life, you know, but why does the where's the fear? You know, the fear would pop up, you would see the fear um in every different form, you know, whether it's um, poverty or sickness or illness or, you know, skin conditions, um, pain, all the different things, you know, the common denominator in that was, you know, emotions. So in order to find the origin of those emotions, you know, that trail for me was, you know, digging deep and following it back. And you know where it led. It led to the other aspect. Um, but it didn't doesn't have to be that detailed for someone. It's that understanding that if one created out of one, then anything down from that in any shape or form had to have come from that one it's just that simple you know I wanted to understand the details not everybody needs that I have friends that totally get it without even having to you know dive through multi-universes day after day hour after hour minute after minute you know which in every which direction so that understanding will set you free because if you are manifesting something in front of your face that is fearful then it allows you to you know you, it's like a mirror you look back inside of yourself and say why am i still seeing this if you're still seeing it then it's still in your cellular memory somewhere because if it's not you won't see it there's no way possible it's the universal law it's not possible to see something or know something that is not inside of you and that takes me to the female aspect um this is not something that you have um, have really dove into. You know it's there. It's like it's almost like you just know. And whereas you kind of merged with the father aspect that was inside of you, had been talking to you since birth, and saw things from the father aspect. When I jumped into that female aspect, oh my gosh, it was like um, it was like a merging that opened up a whole new understanding and reality for both of us. Um, when I stepped into the female aspect, I uh, realized I was Earth. I was Earth. I was, and I don't, I don't know how to explain it other than that. I began to see how every human on the planet uh, makes up Earth itself, the consciousness itself. So when the Earth shifts, it's basically the humanity uh, has reached um, um, a certain um, point or a level let's see what is that the um the maximum the what is that minimum or maximum um, the macro uh no it reaches that level to where it's over 51 percent um, oh you're talking about the i, I know what you're talking the, about okay it's yeah. like the polarity of that particular yes we're working organism and the size and the that's what humanity's for Humanity mm -hmm. is, you know, they come, people um, from all over, beings from all over come to an ascending planet, which is a plane, which is a matrix that is a creation. And when you come here from somewhere else, even though you think, well, I am not, I, I'm not from that one creator that created that, because that's just not me. I know this doesn't feel right, blah, blah, blah. But when you come here from somewhere else, from another planet, there may be, you may be on a planet that's not an ascension planet. And you've been there for a long time. You've been comfortable, but you need an experience. Um, you need to grow your soul level. So you come to Earth and you do the ascension thing, and you do so many lifetimes, and you work on shifting your polarity after forgetting who you were. But when you came here, you had to make an agreement with Mother Earth, which is the collective consciousness of the beings here, and you become a part of that when you come here doesn't mean that you become that forever it just means that you have to merge with the father mother god consciousness of this reality in order to be here so in that way to look at it as a star seed or as someone who's not from here and didn't create this reality you became a part of it when you when you incarnated and you had to get basically approval to be here from that consciousness well yeah it's kind of like when in rome be a roman 
you know, there's that, that takes me to something I actually discovered just yesterday because this, this, the different polarities of the different identities can be found in all books, all scriptures, all of everything, all science, all history, it's all there. And in my journey through finding the history that's, you know, has actually laid out, like whether it's American history or um, whichever country you want to pinpoint, that that is a repetitious um, play that's in the different um, cultures, the different belief systems, whatever. So yesterday, one of the things I found is exactly what you're talking about in the book of Ruth uh, in the Bible. And she says those very words. While I'm here, I, it's the family that she went into. Your father will be my father. Your God will be my God. Your land will be my land. And then she adapted to that. You adapt to your surroundings in order to get the full experience. And then you, the way to find your way out is to follow the own, your own breadcrumbs that you left until it makes a slice of bread. And then it has several slices. And then before you know it, you've got your whole loaf. So it's going backwards to find your own identity amongst the things that you adapted to. Well, that's exactly what you've been doing <laughs> your whole life. And last, whole year, life. last year, you told me that's when you really started being able to understand when we met. I had the understanding of what I had read, what I had assimilated in all of the videos, all of the all of the information online that my higher self has, I mean, all of a sudden I would just end up where I needed to be listening to what I needed to listen to and mm -hmm. learning. I was basically learning the word, the jargon, the words that humanity was using to describe what was happening and what you had done your whole life is seen visions and had things happen to you and everything unfolded the way it should. And you really started being able to piece that together with the knowledge that I had to understand where we are uh, as far as on the ascension path, where we are as a collective, where you are individually, where I am individually, and you know each person in your life where they were individually, and it's just been fascinating. Um, <clears throat> we are a unity consciousness here, but we have been creating in distortion, and that in a way was a purposeful thing of this reality in order to um, provide the soul growth needed um, through um, fr friction, through friction, through through emotions, and um, what we're going to be doing at the conference is is helping people pinpoint those emotional distortions, and um, you know transform them, transform the polarity of that emotional energy uh, once and for all. But yeah, it's, there's one thing I'd like to say, add to that, mm -hmm. because one of the the biggest messages that was left, that I left for myself, there was so much fear entangled around it that I would never look at it. I would never look at it. I could not see my own message because of the emotions that were so entangled around it. It was like a, a cobweb with, you know, any little insect you could find and all you could see, what I couldn't see it for the emotions. So when I conquered the fear only by, you know, doing the little exercises or tools that I had, you know, created for myself, was I able to see that every message in these articles or books that I was scared to look at or I thought, oh, well, that's not, that's just not for me. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't have to look at stuff like that. Well, where else are you, where's the best hiding place for yourself? while you're creating is in something that you know you put so much fear around it's the best hiding place you could have put so it's it's quite incredible when you start realizing that something that you refuse to look at you refuse to read was where some of your um, biggest clues are at let me tell you the irony of this reality and that all the answers are within that is true but what do you think this reality outside of you is? It's a projection through the, through the eyes and through the matrix of what is inside of you.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so exactly. That's yes. That's the irony. It's almost like it's the everything is hidden within, but the truth is is that without is where we hid it right in front of our eyes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. It's like having on a pair of contact lenses that you can only see the different layers and the the actual lens changes as you the deeper you dig you can see what was always there the whole time you just couldn't see it and what we're really seeing is what we created out of distortion which was the yes. fact that our hearts were closed we had been hurt so many times we had been uh, killed so many other lifetimes we'd been betrayed We'd been, um, anything you can think of that was bad has happened. Um, and so, and so we carried all that in our DNA. So, <clears throat> so that when we came to this time, we could use that experience and that, that energy. And we could, I mean, it, transformation is a word that, that we're using to show how we're changing the polarity of having a, a reality that's, based in fear to one that's based in love. So and so all of that, how are you going to know what love is unless you have experienced everything in fear first? Does that make sense? It does. Um, I really, I, I look at it just a little bit differently because I know there's a difference between love and good. Good is an extreme polarity of bad. Love is the center balance of both. So if I have, if I draw it out on a piece of paper uh, long ways and I put love in the center and then I look at the different, the two polarities, because what we want is that balance. Um, because if we go straight back into love, we go into an, a light body again and we're actually wanting an experience, a physical, physical experience that we can have more balance where we can still hug our loved ones and and actually reside with them but with you know you so there has to be some polarity uh, pure love you know is the derivative it's the origin so it's kind of like finding the balance where there is some friction there there has to be a small amount in order to not go right back into a light body. Does that make sense? Yes, I think the polarity that we're keeping is the individual personality, which in, is actually not a truth because we're all one. We all came from source. Right, but it's that expansion that turns into the individual individuality of each one. So it, it, it kind of is a mix-up. You know, you don't mm -hmm. want to. If you had, you know, 50 billion Sonyas, That'd get, that'd get kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> right. So everybody has their own tastes. Everybody yeah. has their own way of, of their own um, superpowers. They have their, you know, they work together. It's like you take, it's like, it's like the ocean. You have all the drops of water in the ocean, but each, each drop of water in the ocean is going to have its own contribution to the ocean itself. And that right. ocean uh, ebbs and flows and, is in more unity. If you had um, a tsunami, that's not really unity anymore. That's more overpowering, and some of the some of the drops of water rose to the top, crashed down, and went down into the undertow. And that you know that may be needed um, in the future to create new realities. But I think where we are right now is that's actually happening, where some are rising to the top, some are you know falling down underneath and being crushed and all of that is going to eventually um, be calm waters at you know when it's all said and done and it basically separates um, those who who want to play nice and those who don't and um, that's where we're at so right you could actually apply that to the whole financial system what you just got through saying that just goes to show that that energy pattern is in each and every single thing everywhere and you can watch that energy pattern i mean the, there, there's light workers out there that can just pick it up and see it happening and it's that understanding that's that's that knowledge now i understand that 
uh, watch it, watch the flow of it, you know, catch the pattern of it. It's kind of like when you're learning how to dance, you're listening to the beat, you start that moving, you know, the next thing you know, you're, your booty's shaking, you know, your arms are flowing. It's that flow of, um, and how do you want to change that? You know, how are, well, it's understanding how it's being changed, how we're changing it, getting into the flow of going against the flow, um, which helps you to understand, you know, that whole stepping out of your own creation to look at it to see what's actually happening and which direction you want it to go. Yeah, you likened it to a salmon swimming upstream. Oh, yeah, I love that one. It's, it's you know, think about that. All the salmon, all the different weird little ticks that have happened throughout um, history. You can just pick them out, you know, let them just light up and then look at it and then see, how is that possible? How, how is that possible? Um, <clears throat> you can, there's so many different scenarios of it and where are they going and why are they going there? You know, I'm very inquisitive, as you know, and sometimes my questions, you know, can take me way off um, into areas that at first I think, why did I do that? Well, then all of a sudden as I'm coming back, it's like it's those little breadcrumbs and I'm pulling it all together into this, all of a sudden this understanding that I'm like, oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been pretty wild to you say the least form. it's uh, like you, all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh this is so exciting yes yeah. um, um so as so back to recognizing the polarities of yourself in the manifestation before your eyes once you've once you've either worked on well, however you want to call it yourself, embodying your higher self, connecting with the Father, Mother, God of this creation, understanding that we're all one, um, so you can see yourself in other people and your reality. You can understand that you, um, not only before you incarnated, created a whole play or a situation, a sitcom. This is basically your own sitcom. Um, unfolding in front of your eyes, but you're co-creating it um, in your sleep as well when you connect back with your higher self or with source. And then you say, well, I don't think I'm getting far enough on this. I think I need to create something in my world. Uh, So let me just get into this matrix here and reprogram this and that. And uh, hey, uh, Sonia, will you want to co-create something with me? Uh, Let's have a little friction in our lives. So, you know, it'll (laughs) unfold tomorrow when we wake up. (laughs) <laughs> and and if we don't get it then, then we'll have to do something else. We'll have to keep manufacturing these situations until that consciousness in that body recognizes what's st- still being held in that precious DNA inside that body so that we can prepare this uh, being for this transformation that's upcoming. <laughs> right. I, I like to use the, I like to say it like this. Okay, so maybe in the dream state, what we're doing is that um, instead of using the word creating, what we're doing is we're gathering up some energy that's already out there and we're transforming it into um, a little skit. And that little skit actually plays out the next day and because you and I both have just imagined this, okay, we're in this place and we're we're friends and we're giggling and laughing well now tomorrow i'm going to do this and then then i'm going to do this and i'm going to trick you and i'm going to um we're going to play a joke on you or whatever and let's see how you react to it and it's those it's it's little um it's almost kind of like little um imaginary mind games as to what will work to trigger that um what i like to say is plaque on the inner and on the inside of the cell of the the memory cell Mm -hmm. that's embedded in each one and you were scraping it off at first you might you know think oh what is that that's just gross well yeah that icky yucky dark slimy energy that is called fear or um, greed or whatever you want to call it that you can even change your voice and make it sound scary you know whatever you need to do to lure it out 
become your own bait, you know, yank it out of there so it can be transformed into a beautiful uh, fruit bearing tree somewhere, you know, that's a shade or um, that you can listen to it as it blows in the wind, something more balanced and um, heartwarming. Well, you have to realize what you're in and, and who you are exactly. in order for all of this. That's the bottom line of, of mm-hmm. what we're trying to say today. And um, it's really great when you have uh, connected with someone that can remind you of how to do that. And once one person does this, just one person going go, going deep within themselves um, and accepting that they're creating their reality, that they've created the cellular memory that's in their DNA and um, transforming that energy and changing the polarity of it, then it uh, that manifests as an open door for the rest of humanity to remember how to do that and remember where we are. Not everyone on the planet has this in their uh, play to unfold, but I know that the people who are uh, the first waivers, the first um, the people who are slated for ascension, who who came here to to ascend, the people who came here, who have already ascended and came here from another plane of ascension to help push uh, humanity forward and the ascension forward, so that because it already has happened, there is no time, but um, there were people who came here to ascend from other places that that did not um couldn't wake up out of the spell and then you know there were such some players here uh that played the opposing forces the ones of domination and control and of fear that really did a good job in the play oh wow yeah and so um some of us came here to embody the wholeness of the situation to t- kind of tone down that extreme part of the negative in order to give those a chance who really want want to catch this ascension or this descension wave depending on how you look at it right right because that, it's a that's balance. a good that's a good statement because it is in which direction you look at it because everything you can trace it back to in the order it was received that the in the order it was received is how you find yourself in each and everything and as a whole even you can follow back history as well well as this creation was an expansion at one point it knew that it was going to get to um, the densest part of its creation and began to pull uh, energy back from the densest part back up that's what the ascension is in a way but in order before you can ascend you have to descend to the to the most extreme densest part of the creation in order to change the the bottom of the of the barrel so to speak and then turn it back um, pull it back out pull back out to uh, merge back with it's like a slinky you pull that slinky all the way out and then when you start Pull, pushing the slinky back together, all of those timelines start folding and, and collapsing on top of each other until when you take a slinky and you push it all the way back together, you can literally take, like, um, I'm just putting a pen, uh, a writing an ink pen, a pencil, in the middle of that slinky all compressed, and you can jump onto the pen and slide back um, out of the creation. That's kind exactly. of like the... It- it's like but the I node point. <laughs> yeah, it's the node point. That node point is where it all folds over and that's the very center, which is in each and every individual and each and every um, town in which they reside. Then that node point also is in that larger uh, state, which is then that larger country. Then, And as that all folds over and folds back out, you know, that very center of that individual's uh, reality is right in the center of their heart. And then all of a sudden you see the center of your heart all over the planet. It's absolutely incredible. Then you'll see what journey you've taken. 
Yeah, let's touch on that a minute because it is, it's a little surreal because you have to understand we're in a holographic matrix. But in order to create a reality, there's a template that's used. The distortion on the template is what's what we've created out of fear or what we've created out of dominance and control, which would be fear of not being connected to source and not having any energy to survive. So I'm talking about the reptilians and what we've deemed, you know, in the past, the archons and all the parasites and vampire attachments that are in that fourth dimension that are not connected to source and are fearful of losing their existence because they don't have energy. So, um, so in, in order to, I just totally lost my train of thought. Help me pick it back <laughs> up. Well, you said it like me when I go off on one of my little journeys. Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, but what were we talking about right before that? See how, do you see though, because I even said the words. Are we still being recorded? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't tell the difference. <laughs> do you see how when I said the words reptilian and archon, how the energy shifted to where um, I, lo I was, I was I literally was watching you. I was literally watching you like float off. I'm like, what is she doing? Is she still recording? Are we still talking? What's going on? I was watching you float off. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I but, love it. This is a great, great opportunity for me to say what I'd like to say. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So uh, if if all this stays in the recording, um, I don't. I'm sure all the intuitives out there just felt Michelle kind of like float off for a few seconds. Well, that to me is the, the, this, this greatest opportunity to say that right there was an example that was manifested to show us all how, what happens when fear or even the word reptilian or vampire or any of those things comes up um, I know Michelle doesn't have those fears, but she manifested this just for this, this specific opportunity. Because once you see those fears and you see that it is the, the word reptilian, you know, immediately your mind goes to, you know, the Illuminati or the, you know, these, uh, what do you call them? All of these, um, uh, Oh, what are those zombies or all these things that you see on TV or, you know, the, the kids don't seem to be worried about it. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. The kids they love like playing the games. And everything. They love playing the games. Why aren't they afraid? Now, you ask a 50-year-old woman that has three or four kids and is now a grandmother, and she'd be like, oh, don't be watching that. That's going to tarnish you. I've been there. I was that person. I refused to watch anything with blood and guts. I just wasn't going to do it. Because that's where my biggest fear was at. I couldn't understand. My fear was my children being hurt. My, my fear were for my babies. I knew I didn't have to. I knew not to watch it. You know, I, I just knew that I didn't like the way it felt. But I thought that they were going to be lured into some hideous, uh, you know, sacrificial whatever you know words i don't i didn't even look at well all of a sudden when i realized that those exact things were the individualized manifestations of a huge collective of billions those are the fears manifesting that when those fears are looked at and they know that they actually created each and every one of them then the, the polarity of it switches instantaneously and cannot exist. In our reality, they don't. But right. what, we're having, what we're having to do is literally go back to talk to people and tell them how to get to where we got. And, you know, I still right now can't remember what I was talking about before I manifested that situation so that we could see I was literally speaking as my higher self totally in a flow of information from my cellular DNA knowing exactly what I was talking about but when I spoke those words 
it completely cut my train of thought and my channeling ability off. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was amazing. It was cool. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was too. That was last night before we went to sleep, we said, Hey, let's do this. Because we really didn't prepare much for this show. No, I was, I was thinking, where's she going? Where's she going? That was, that was amazing. Good job, sister. Thank you. Well, that just ha- that's that's just happened to to show people if it's not in love, then it's not going to be in our new reality. But in our new reality, we may remember and we can sit and talk about what happened and how we learned and where we came, you know, how we got to where we were or we are. Um, but we're literally manifesting a new reality based on um, realizing that we are we created those archonic beings they're they're they were created because our hearts were closed and the energy the 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 thoughts that manifested the words the feelings that we created because our hearts were closed because we were always uh so devastated from being disconnected from source to begin with we were devastated from having to be thrown into such a uh, dense reality um, where everything was so slow and we couldn't manifest what we wanted and people were killing each other and war and all this stuff we didn't you know if, especially if you have already done this before this ascension thing before and you had to come back in it was devastating and we forgot we totally forgot right who we were well you know another way to look at it too and it's it's kind of like whenever it's the opposite of someone that is becoming an addict okay so you they they they're in a in a car wreck and 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 it was an innocent innocent thing and and it's across the board right now with um all of these people that start out with an injury and they start taking some type of um first they start with you know advil or tylenol or whatever then they go to the doctor and then they end up taking, um, you know, just a small dose of a pain pill. Well, then their body adjusts to that. Next thing you know, before they even realize it, they are on the strongest painkiller out there and the doctor won't prescribe it to them anymore. Well, we don't want you to become addicted to a, a, you know, a prescription, even though it is a prescription, but it's, it's an addiction. It still has become an addiction. So when they can't get the prescription anymore, what do they do? They hit the streets. Well, when they hit the streets, then they end up, you know, becoming a full-blown addict. They lose their family. They lose their home. It's so that direction that we can see each and I mean, it's everywhere. Now, if you take that, let's go in reverse. Just go in reverse follow it back to where it actually started and then what caused that pain that ever made you take that first pill to start out with then you follow that back then you follow that back that technique can allow you to dissect each and everything that is appearing in front of you because what better way for you to actually manifest it than in your own people in your own um, situations, your own environment, when you look at it and it's find the familiar spot, there's a familiar avenue in each and everything that's right in front of your face. It, it, it may take you a minute to get used to that, um, that direction that you're going, but the only way to figure out what you have right in front of you is to know where, number one, who you are, where you are, and then where did this come from? I want to know where this came from. So going into reverse, um, that's how you start to learn how to decode these words. And words that appear um, in the Bible, words that appeared in, in different... You don't read a lot of other people's uh, articles, but I've showed you articles, and every now and then you're led to read certain things. And also words that... Um, as an aspect of source um, being tied to you, let's just say that I would text you something one day. We text all the time. And then you could literally take what 
source downloaded into me to text to you and you could decode that as a message. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that was, um, that was amazing discovery that I did not expect to happen. Um, you know, I, you're right. I don't read other people's articles and it's not that I think, um, one way or another, it's just, I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand what they were saying. And I didn't like the way that made me feel. I didn't like feeling like I was stupid and the, all the words that the whole, um, the different communities use, I, I, I just couldn't get it. And it was because they had their own, it was their identity was on it. No wonder I couldn't understand it. But I, I never did get into the, the verbiage or the right, correct words because the, that didn't, didn't work for me even though I could understand the big picture for me personally I, I just I, I didn't like the way I it made me feel like I was lesser well I don't want to be lesser I'd rather just not talk than be lesser you know so why is that it was this whole feeling that took place is what and then understanding how you know we're actually in reverse now which has become our destination you know, it's, it's, it's like not driving the car in reverse, but actually just kind of like flipping it over and going back right through what you created. Um, and as you pass this stuff by, you're like, well, well, I don't really understand this or that. So instead of just driving through it, you know, I have to get off and dig down in. What am I looking at? Because as I was looking at it backwards, I could understand it, which was crazy. Um, but how do you during, see oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, how do you see that in the Bible? Well, you know, I never could read it. <clears throat> never could. You know, my history of, you know, growing up, my, my linear history, like with my mom and dad and family, you know, I was uh, raised Catholic, the first part, and then we went through every single religion, you know, so I got a taste of every single thing out there. But you know, I, I couldn't remember what they were saying because, you know, I was kind of in my own world every, you know, single step of the way. But I would hear what they were saying, but I it didn't jive with what was going on inside of me. But then I, so as, you know, as an adult and I'm looking back and thinking, you know, um, there had to have been a reason for that. And one thing led to another to where I started, you um, it was my communication with, you know, father, which led me to understand and said, well, why, well, why do you think it's that way? Or why do you think it's this way? I'm like, I don't know. Well, look at it this way or look at it that way. So when you start looking at all the different languages out there and how, if I say, you know, shopping or um, couch or whatever, they say it differently across the world. Um, I say it with a Texas accent and the vibration of what I'm saying. Sometimes I noticed it, especially too, with my iPhone that, you know, Siri can't understand a word I'm saying. <laughs> and I thought, why is that? You know, why can't this chick get what I'm saying? You know, I have to stop and put my glasses on and top it out. And it just gets annoying because I would try to, so I would try to change my voice. If I changed my voice and tried to be more precise and even, you know, change the, the tones and the, the length of, or try to, it's not really easy when you've been raised in, you know, the part of Texas I've been raised in, you know, it's a lot of slang. It's a lot of slang talk for whatever reason. Um, but I'm assuming Siri was, you know, developed in a a factory with someone that had very precise English, English language, you know what I'm saying? Because how else, why can't she understand me? She dang sure wasn't made in Texas or she would have got it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but yes. that was my whole point of understanding that how that word is pronounced, um, the different syllables in it. So I started looking up the words in syllables well the different syllables meant nothing nothing like what i thought they meant mm -mm. so i thought okay that's just kind of weird 
So I started applying that to sentences. So when someone would text me, I would take that sentence and I would, what I call, decode it by the different syllables in the words. Well, then you can, but you have to go to the origin of where that word came from. You could look at which century it came in. You can look at if it was um, uh, New English or if it was derived from you know, the Latin language. Wherever it was derived from, you can um, counter, you know, crisscross and get counterpoints as to the whole layout of the timeline and, and history in itself, which I knew nothing about. I was never present in school, you know. I was, my body was there, but I didn't get anything out of it. Then all of a sudden, I realized that what someone just said to me that sounded like, um, I'm just going to use a hypothetical sentence, Sonia, you're a hag. Okay, well, when you start decoding that, it's like you're doing an amazing job. It was <laughs> nothing. It was nothing like what this person said. Okay, so it just shows you the distortion that has been layered yes. on the um, not only the translations, but what the Vatican or the Catholic Church wanted to use for um, keeping people under control. control. Yes, and the control. For, the, for, the, for the new versions, the New Testament, new versions of the Bible. But right. the, origin, the origin is still there. It's because these beings in the fourth dimension or whatever they are that we created, these emotions, the negative distortion doesn't know how to create it's it doesn't have creational abilities it can only change mimic, um, mimic and change mm -hmm. so you yeah. can still find um, the original uh, message in the Bible and you can also the Bible has the unfolding of the transformation of the times that we're in now so um, everything does not just the Bible everything does it's, you can look at history books. You can look at the Bible. You can look at um, any religion, not just the Bible. You can look at um, Islamic. You can look at, um, I can't even think of a wall now, but any religion that you could absolutely imagine, the same exact stories are in there. And once you've come to this understanding, for whatever reason, that lifts that distortion. It puts you. It changes the air in which you reside to where that air becomes compatible with each and everything on the planet. Okay, now you're taking me full circle to when I <laughs> floated out of my body. And, okay, so this is the most important thing that I want to talk about that that we've seen. You briefly mentioned that where you are in your town where you are in your city, where you are in your state, where you are in your country is all a fractal, a fractalization of a pattern of creation that's used to create this matrix to where when you fold, you can fold everything um, like on the map. If you were to lay it out like, like the flat earth theorists, that's why the flat earth theory became so big so that people could understand there you go. This was a plane of existence, P L A N E. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. is a fractal flower of life template pattern that's used to duplicate itself all across this plane. So if you want to flatten everything out to in order to understand it, then you can that way. So if you fold all that up, starting from the outside, like those little when we were in high school, we used to write notes to people. And yes. we used to fold them all up into this football thing and fold it all mm -hmm. up into a triangle. That's pretty much uh, what this reality is. So um, what what we see we're, where, we, where we are right now, as in going when we go backwards, we're not linearly going backwards in time, back through the timeline. We're jumping all over the place. And we may be going to 1800s and grabbing a part of that and folding it back up uh, and uh, folding that corner up and we may be jumping to the future um, when we wake up in our body we're somewhere different every time we're not in linear creation anymore we are now in witnessing and grabbing mode to where we're folding everything up and making it into that little three that triangle football if you were to take something really sharp and poke it right down in the middle that's how you can travel back and forth uh, along that uh, creation 
Um, go ahead and just expand on what I just said, and then we'll go from there. Well, it's, it's it sounds complex, but it's actually extremely simple. Um, this creation was just for expansion. If you're expanding one into billions, it's still going to be that one. So the similarity of that one is going to be embodied in each position on each playing field. So I don't care how many playing fields you put out there, you can find that one inside of it. No matter where it's at, it, it has going to have the same, uh, it's going to become the same shape, even though it looks like it's not because the borders have meshed. Okay, the borders, they, the borders were changed on the wave of expansion. It, it, it made the different borders look rippled or it looked like it had different shapes and sizes. But when you can get down deep into it, then you can see that it is the same exact situation, um, same instance that has just repeated itself with a different individual personality flair on it. Okay. So if, if God is in all and he's duplicated himself into billions, it's still God in each and every single one. So that familiarness right there of who he is, or if it's your higher self, or I even know someone that calls him Jason. That's that they call their God Jason. And see, so it doesn't matter what you call that person, that individual cell is in each and every cell of each and every place that is, you know, any expanded version of it, you're going to be able to find it on this planet, whether it's round, square, rectangle, circle, flat, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You're going to find it there. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> because how do you put words to this? I mean, I can see it now. I can see it in my third eye. I can see the pattern of creation and the matrix. And But what does all that mean? I mean, why do we even have to go down that path? Well, it's so we can find out where we are. You have where to identify your own personality in that mix to actually move the individual vessel into a more balanced playing field. And here's a messed up thing that I have been hesitant to really talk about because it makes people might misunderstand the fact that you think that you're so powerful or that you're so special that you um, are standing in God's shoes. Um, who do you think you are? <laughs> but <laughs> I'm telling you, I've seen this. Okay, so... We've talked about the background people before, but we haven't talked about the fact that some of the people in our reality are actually us, <laughs> that oh, we yeah. created them, mm -hmm. meaning that meaning that we created a holographic representation of another person in our reality that we put our energy into so that it can mirror back information to us or... Uh, communicate with us as part of the co-creative abilities of the matrix itself as being a holographic reality and in some essence some essence you can call it a background person it doesn't come to life until you animate it so that literal animation that's done on a subconscious level where you start interacting with another being you can download a program instantly into that being that will interact with you and tell you where you are what you need to work on and what's next did that make sense? <laughs> yeah, it made sense. It made sense. And everybody's going to look at it differently. And, and, and that's, that's the whole point of it. It doesn't matter how someone else perceives it as long as they get the gist of that they're not stuck anywhere. That they're not yes. being controlled by anybody else. Yes. That no one is out to get them. And no yes. one is attacking them. 
<clears throat> if they continue to believe that as a creator God, which we all are, each and every individual on this planet is a creator God because they came from a creator God, then if they want to continue, um, you know, horror, horror things, uh, you know, ending up in their house or whatever, that is going to continue to happen for them if they choose that. Yes. Yes. Implants. Basically. Um, <clears throat> entity attachments, all those things are things of my past and I've grown past that because I have owned it and I have said, that's me. Um, I can, uh, it's, it, once you do it, it disappears and you literally vibrate to another level of creational existence, uh, to where you're no longer creating and you're now transforming what you created into a new reality. Exactly. And when you can understand that we're not creating anymore, that there's nothing else to create, that's when you start seeing um, like repeats of something in front of your face. So say, for instance, um, let's just say uh, Jane is works so hard. And but every time she turns around, she gets behind on her uh, cell phone bill. Why is she getting behind on her cell phone bill when she, you know, she's working hard, she's doing what she's supposed to do, but it keeps popping up. It seems like she's like, what happens? Why either she forgets to pay it or, you know, they are charging her too much or the company is trying to get to her. Or there's some kind of something with that cell phone bill. And if she doesn't get the message, then the next time it comes around, it's going to be larger. We leave these clues for us, and until that clue, until you have received that message, it's going to enhance, and it's going to enhance a little bit bigger, because when you're coming the opposite direction, which we're going against the flow, which is now our direction, is the against the flow of creation. Mm-hmm. On the create, okay, so if it's creating, it's going one direction. We get to the very end of it, whatever year, date, and time that was, and we turned around because now all we have is just the repeats are starting to overlay into um, it's just it get it actually gets ridiculous, it just gets absolutely ridiculous. You can see it in Hallmark movies right now, but as you're coming back through that, you have to know. That if you don't receive anything that keeps popping up, write it down. Take a picture of it. Look at it. And then dissect it. Because if you don't look at it and dissolve it, it's going to enhance. Until you get it. That's just, we're creator gods. We're not going to be um, easy on ourselves at some point. You know, it's like, you should know this. And each individual will understand as they start doing it and it becomes like um your everyday you don't even think about it it just happens you just know what somebody's saying to you you don't get your feelings hurt you don't get um upset because nothing can upset you because you know you manifested that in front of you as a clue and you're like why am i telling myself that why did i just say that to myself and at first it's kind of you know a, a, a tug of war you know, each side of you, each polarity of you is like pulling. You're like, no, she really meant that. She was trying to be mean. She was being derogatory. Are you kidding me? There's no way anyone can be derogatory to you. This is your inside. It's your, it's almost like having, you know, a dark one on one shoulder and a light one on the other. Well, then they switch places to confuse you. But that in itself will allow you to understand where you're at, what you're doing, who you actually are, what your particular mission is, which most people don't really get what it is. You know, I was one of them. I didn't know, what, what am I supposed to be doing here? I feel like I'm all over the place. Now I know. Now I know what my mission is. I know exactly what it is because I am picking up the pieces and as my bundle grows and it start, it's, it's kind of like it's, it's going out. It reminds me of those pasta machines. You know, when they make up that dough and they put it through the machine on the other end, it comes out as something else. Mm -hmm. That's what it reminds me of. We're like one big osmosis or pasta machine that's just you're eating your own uh, creation and it's transforming out behind you into something absolutely incredible. Well, that's just the coolest thing. <laughs> the 
coolest way you've described it so far. I get so excited and carried away that I don't, I try to tell myself, okay, now you're going to have to stay simple with this, but I could just, you know, do the happy dance and say, look, everybody look what we get to do. It's so incredible. Okay. So what we're learning, well, why, when I say we, I'm talking about you and I, and I, and I know other people are already at this phase of understanding. So oh, most that, when I say yes. we, that's who I'm talking about. It might look different and it might feel different, but yes. they're doing the same thing. Yes. It, this is are. all about understanding what we're doing. It's not that we are, you know, I'm doing something that nobody else can do or, you know, that I'm all that. It. No, I just, I just happen to get it. Better. Yes, exactly. Yes. We're all doing it. I just happen to get it. Yes. That's why I, that's one point I wanted to make. And the second mm. point is um, about walking as a master. We're basically walking through this reality through this. We're not really moving anywhere, but we are walking through the matrix and we are every day we wake up, we're in a different place. And we're kind of we kind of are pulling um, our whole timeline together and we're helping and assisting other beings pulling their timeline together. Eventually, we're going to pull everything down to just a few timelines. And the way we do that is we, we look at our reality, whether we use the Bible to, to, to get the whole storyline, whether we watch movies, because now we're not afraid to watch movies or turn the television on. Nothing can affect us because we created all that shit to begin with. Well, because that's your message. If you turn it on... If you have the desire to turn on the TV, then you're on the other side of there looking like either a news person or an anchor person or you are, you know, a, a movie star, whatever, whatever. You are everything. So look at every message and take it in as it's a message for you. I don't care how hideous it looks. I don't care how hideous it looks. That message, when it's decoded, is nothing like what it looks like. That is still the distortion creating this, you know, this blase picture of something that makes no sense whatsoever. Because what is a master? When you're mastering something, what does that mean? That means you understand and know exactly what you're doing. The only way you can do that is to understand where you're at. And you own it. That's so right. You're, you're own it own, all. You're, uh, you know, sometimes you even say, well, I think I wrote that movie. You mm -hmm. know, when you... <laughs> it gets quite um, funny, yeah. You, you, yeah, you can, you can be on Facebook and, it, you know, you're not worried about the government uh, watching you, but yet you're being led to every little clue um, that someone else is writing. They are you, you are them, so they're giving you your next clue. So what well, you're yeah. doing... The government watching you is your own clue that you're on the right track. Why not twist it and turn it into what you want it to be? You are the creator God, after all. Why not? So while you're sitting at the movie and you said, well, I'm not going to eat that popcorn and have a soda because that all that shit stuff is GMO. It's full of toxins. Uh, no. Where you go to the movie, now you sit <laughs> down and you say, well, I'm going to give me a buttered popcorn and I'm going to have a root beer and I'm going to own it and I know that this can't affect me. So while you're doing that, what you're, the steps you're taking, whether whatever, whatever tools that you use, movies, you're eating, you know, you're following your own personal uh, body as to what it needs in that moment to make itself happy so that you can start your, your mastering. What you're going to do is you're going to observe. Follow your cravings. Yes. You're going <laughs> to observe. You're going to detach emotionally from what you see unfolding. You're going to dissect it. That whether you use um, decoding by words or whether you use your clairvoyance and you follow, you can follow the thread of what's happening all the way back to its inception and creation. However, you personally have learned how to do that. You're going to dissect it and then you're going to dissolve it. You're going to be like the Pac-Man. You're going to basically eat it up. You're mm -hmm. just going to ingest it and you're going to eat it <laughs> up and it's never going to be there again. And you keep moving backwards into the inception of when you came into this creation. And you're going to have all that information and all that energy. You're literally going to manifest a new reality for yourself. Exactly. You know, I have found that my cravings lead me to information. Um, and, you know, if 
if people really knew what I would eat on a daily basis, it's it's just. Um, I don't know if poor, we should share that, Sonia. Uh, I know it's my hilarious. poor husband. My it poor husband so just you know now the grocery list. He's like, okay, so what is it this week? Because it will be weeks and weeks at a time of one or two things that I cannot get enough of until I have. It's almost like as I'm eating what those words are, it starts manifesting in my brain as to what is actually happening on the entire planet in different different aspects and different places and right down to the root of where it actually came from. Then I can find it in the nursery rhymes and then I can find it in the the little songs that, that my grandchildren will tell me about in their homework. I'll see it in their homework. And that's what I've been eating, you know, for weeks at a time. It's just wild. It's so surreal. Um, I can't even, <laughs> we can't even begin to describe it. But um, I, I'm not telling people just to go out and eat whatever you want out of a distorted place of uh, understanding. What I do, what I can tell people is you get to a certain point that you you do know how to honestly follow what your body is telling you, whether it be um, I got to have a, a slice of pizza tonight or I have to have this. You, you know, you throw everything that you thought that you knew from spiritual and metaphysical teachings about food out the door because you realize you created everything in this reality. And so for everything expansion has a, only for, for expansion, expansion. Yes. For some expansion people, only. This, some people in their, in whatever phase of expansion or contraction that they're in, they don't need to eat anything but raw foods. That's right. Some people are there. Some, I never, I never got to that place cause I didn't write that into my script. Oh girl, mine went completely the other direction. So I mean, completely I the other only, direction. Only eat meat. And hardly eat any vegetables, and they're they're right where they need to be on their path. That's really what I want to say about that. Is this is so individual? It's crazy because we are all one. So when well, some, the thing when is, is nobody else can crave. Okay, so you have two different individuals there, and one of them is you're actually co-creating, and one of them is you know. What even if they think it or they feel it that all they want to do is eat lettuce? You know, all I want to do is eat lettuce, 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 lettuce. Well, you as soon as that individual decides that why am I wanting to eat lettuce all the time? There has to be a reason because nobody wants to eat lettuce. I mean, come on, get real about it. It's grass, you know. It, it, um, Not just lettuce. Well, you know what I mean, but it, it it's the concept of it. You know that why is it to get skinny? Um, is it for your outer looks? Is it for your to be healthy? Is it for then Vibration. how do you how do you know that that is the truth in a distorted reality? How do you know that? That was my biggest deal. How that's do when I, we were in creation mode? That's right, and it's distorted. So how can you believe anything that you've ever been taught or anything that you feel like you know? When it is in a distorted reality, the only thing that you can depend on is your inner guidance. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. How you feel. How do you feel? How what does do you feel like you feel? Really That's right. When you feel like it, how does it make you feel? That's right. Are you still and, hungry? And what has transformed in your life after That's you right. ate it? That's right. Are you still hungry? If you're still hungry, or if you feel sick at your stomach, then what is the food? Okay, what is food anyway? What is the word food even mean what does I, the word food mean do you need a food. second to look it up no girl I don't need a second food is feeding the knowledge that was instilled in each and every cell that ever left creators existence the, that is the, the the food is what you feed the knowledge to give it the understanding that actually takes it to the 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 truth platform. So when that knowledge that's instilled in you, it can sit there dormant. Okay. But when you feed it the right thing, which is not, doesn't actually mean um, what you're putting in your mouth, because is that even real anyway? It's, it's energy. It's, exactly. vib it's sound. 
geometric patterns and vibration. Exactly. So if you eat, if you go ahead and put in your mouth what it becomes a habit, it changes your habits. And I'll go on and say it. I don't mind saying it. One of the things that I craved was pork, <laughs> pork skins, or and it wasn't just the pork skins. It was the pork. You know, the different brands were different. The different, if it was a pork rind, or I'd never eaten them in my life. Just, just didn't. I don't know why. I mean, I, I never saw them. All of a sudden, I'm eating that. I want that, and I want Butterfingers. And my husband was having to buy them by like, like the, you know, the whole shelf in the pantry was, was just my items for that particular time period. You know, cause I don't even go to the grocery store. He goes to the grocery store cause I can't, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't, it just happens for whatever reason, no sense in getting into that. But when I would eat this, because I'd gotten to the point that nothing tastes good to me anymore. I didn't enjoy eating at all. So I started following my cravings and, you know, first it was sausage and then it went to, and it was a particular sausage, and then it went to these pork rinds, butterfingers, and grape sodas. Well, that's when I got into the whole color of things and how it was, you know, that was a whole other story there. But when I realized that why Sonia in particular was eating pork rinds is that I had to understand what happened with a, an actual pig or a hog. Okay, when um, it, it's a, it's, it seems hideous, you know, because of the distortion, but when you take a pig, they kill it a certain way to make bacon or, or ham or whatever they do because the moment that you kill that pig, the emotions, if, it's, if it sees it coming, that emotions will poison the meat, Okay. That was an example for whatever reason that my higher self or my father or my higher God was trying to show me that I needed to understand what those just what those emotions that fear. Now, how can a pig feel fear? It's proven because they're the meat would be poisoned. Okay, it's a proven fact. Now, all the people that don't eat meat and all that, I understand that's a sensitive subject, but this is only to show that. For whatever reason, I was eating that, which was increasing my sodium level, which then took me into this Einstein mode where, for whatever reason, I now can understand mathematical equations that I, you know, no way possible this physical vessel could understand. Just no way possible. But by allowing my cravings to be met... And just and, and eating it to the point that's really all I ate for weeks for weeks my um, my body is becoming healthier and healthier by the day um, it, how much is, weight have you lost since, I've lost uh, 60 pounds since, since when July. yeah since July now, without dieting I've you just didn't followed have, you my didn't cravings take, you didn't take a multivitamin no. you don't have the daily recommended dosage of the, no. the pyramid triangle thing from uh -huh. what the, you've been taught you no know? i don't have time to, to even that's like a whole nother section of illusion that i don't even have mm -hmm. time to look at because of the direction father's taking me or i am taking myself or however you want to look at it no i'm not saying everybody needs to do this no 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 this I'm is just, just my saying, own is, personal journey yes this is when you understand what we're in and who you are nothing can affect you and you start following exactly the chemical, uh, the alchemy of what your body needs to unlock what is in your cellular DNA memory. And it, it's either your personal journey and or it's, it's related to the collective. Right. Because be for, for me, it was butterfingers and pork rinds. Now you look at what says on the back of those packages. <laughs> And in all reality, the number of butterfingers that I would eat in one day, I should have, um, in this illusion, <clears throat> I should have gained uh, another 60 pounds by the amount of calories that I was intaking. And it's not like I'm out there running and exercising. Um, no, you did not do any exercise to lose all that weight. No, my exercise was in, in all internal so I would lose hours upon hours because of traveling and not even realize that, oh, my gosh, the whole day is gone, you know. Um, don't realize that I'm, you know, been awake all night long. And then so 
even the time schedule starts changing for you to fit what your personal mission is. It's, 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 it's the most amazing thing that people would have a hard time believing it unless they knew me and that, you know, I don't have any reason to lie. I'm sitting here telling everybody I'm eating butterfingers and, and pork rinds and drinking grape soda and lost 60 pounds. Well, I've got pictures to prove it. Um, but I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Because you know? the, the truth it doesn't matter is just, to me. It's in, it's in what, we're, what we're saying. We're trying to put it into words to explain where we are now individually um, sharing our own experience um, so that other people, if they're riding this path, they can say, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I'm going through. It just looks a little bit different. That's right. And where we are as a collective, and because we are Earth. So where we are, you know, where we're getting to the point of this, of this transformation as to what we actually experience in our reality as a human. And if you would... Um, Let's tie into the collective and let's just give everybody a little um, little bit of hope as to where you see how how close we are. Where is this thing that we call New Earth? You know, we've we've I've hashed this over many times in my other shows. Not everybody's going to New Earth. Some people go back to source. Some people go to another reality. But let's focus on this new creation. Um, as we're trans, as we're transforming everything that we created into something new, where is the new earth? Um, as far as how how it's pretty much how close, close enough it is to, to touch us? it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's close enough to touch. It's it's quite incredible because it's according to whichever direction you know the different ones out there are listening, and I, I can feel them. There's a lot of people out there that are going to hear this that can actually see what I see but they can see it actually a little bit differently. But if you look at, you know, the, the longitude and the latitude of it, it's that, that firmament that was separating the two, you know, at one point was pretty thick. And now that, because that was the illusion that from the direction that I saw it just yesterday has, I could equate that to being, um, and I don't, you know, the, the word I use isn't actual is, isn't actually correct, but it's actually does describe it from how I see it, because I don't want anybody to think that that this word that I'm going to use is how far away it is, because that's not the correct, there's not a terminology, there's not a terminology for where it's at, but I would say that that firmament has now been um transitioned into uh, the only thing left is like one minute there's mm -hmm. one minute between us and it which is not linear time it's the it's like the the width of the band that is stopping the meshing or you know for the transition to like trade places basically mm -hmm. for all of this energy that was used for creation to be transformed into that there's it's like the the consistency on a drawn out scale of one minute. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, we're already there. Yeah, because we're already there. Yeah, our consciousness uh, that we're that we where are right touch, now this has to change. Yes, it's where your feet are touching is going to change, and when that there's only like a minute of thickness left, which is a huge difference from where we were our, we were last week or the week before that. Now, sometimes we step back, and then we get right back on to being one minute away, right? Yes, yes. Okay, so we're so it, we're making excellent progress, and um, as we wrap up this show, um, I just want to um, we're not going to give any dates of what we what when we think that we might literally like in the movie with Eddie Murphy trading places where we're literally. In our other body, in that other consciousness, we're not even going to talk about that on this show. But uh, I'm just putting that uh, teaser out there to think about. Um, for each individual, it's going to be different on how we literally trade places or create or move our consciousness into the new reality, which is just a moment away. Um, I don't know how long that's whether it's going to be individually. You know, some 
maybe oh, you do that and then maybe it's up to each individual mm -hmm. each individual can actually accelerate their own process um, into a higher um, balance that's the beautiful thing about it is that okay so say for instance if you've got um, five people that are walking the same distance and they're all going to end up at that place they're all going to take the same road but there's one or two of those people that decide, well, I want to get there first so I can go do this, this, or this. But it's still getting to that same destination. You've got destination A going to destination B, or if you want to call it one to two, or whatever you want to call those, you know, the beginning and then the next step, okay? If you want to accelerate your own personal path, which is going to a balanced place, like each individual is, then I can help you do that. Because <laughs> I get it. I get it. And it's so exciting. Yes, I can help you do that. Well, one because last thing. it's their own journey. It's always the individual's own journey. It's the clues to find your own self. You're not doing individual sessions, and I actually have not been doing individual sessions for a while now because, A, we've been so busy working on our individual selves and getting us to this particular understanding. B, we've been working with each other so much that I haven't had time to do anything for anyone else, personal one-on-one. -on -one. C, we're preparing for the conference where we can um, individually work with 80 people at a time, and D, we're going to keep trying to do these um, these type of interviews and maybe even some video Skypes in the future where we can reach more people at one time rather than, you know, being, and there's just no way we could, we need to reach a broader audience and anyone who would like to um, host us at a conference, um, we would love to do that as well until as we get closer and closer to uh, our individual uh, consciousness Hopefully, um, we're, we're, we're manifesting as quick as possible our transition into this new reality. But while we're still here, if anyone wants to host us, we'd certainly be um, willing to do that. Right, right. Because there are a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that are happy where they're at right now. And they want to stay in that position for a little while longer. And it's totally okay because at this point, after everything has, if the creation process has completed you know I can't tell you what to do and you can't tell me what to do or which is better for me or which is better for you you know because you'll come across people that are totally satisfied in the position that they're in and that's absolutely wonderful you know I mean um, who am I to tell them that that's not okay or that even the fact that there may be something better out there for them, because obviously where they're at is something that, that their personal vessel is requiring, you know? So it's, we're all in this together. And that means that, you know, if one, it's kind of like this, if one of your kids wants to rodeo and the other one wants to, you know, be on the swim team, are you going to make them both play basketball? <laughs> no exactly. you're not yes you're going to let them explore but it's going to take them into a uh, it's all about the balance of polarity to where you just don't want to you don't need any more clues I mean I don't I don't want any more clues <laughs> so I'm going to look at them and I'm going to uh, you know transform them as quickly as possible so I can you know enjoy more of of the actual experience itself well and from my perspective um, when I step into the mother God shoes I'm saying all right you can play rodeo but you better you better hurry up and get that rodeo stuff done <laughs> because the rest of us are creating a new reality where we don't ride on the backs of the horses or the donkeys or you know the cows we don't do that um, and, and and so we're creating a new playground and whenever you're done with this earth experience and you want to move forward uh, we'll have a new reality waiting for you basically <laughs> There's one more question I want to ask you as we wrap up because I think it's going to help people. Um, we've we have this um, created this 
flu epidemic in, mm-hmm. in the world. And well, I guess in the United States, and I've seen it in Texas, I've seen it in Florida, a lot of the hospitals are completely overwhelmed, um, even turning coat closets and, and supply closets into a place where they can, you know, move a patient and sequester them and, and try to help them get fluids and get over this flu. Mm-hmm. Um, I myself, um, you know, I have been through Ascension flu last year, but I have yet to actually get this flu strain. I think there's a, there's a A strain and a B strain and there's a lot of different crazy things going on out there. But recently, uh, so I, if I started feeling sick, um, I, I took, this is just my own personal experience. I took thousand milligrams of vitamin C three times a day and used colloidal silver and I, I, w- I made smoothies and I tried to boost my immune system, fruit smoothies. And mm-hmm. I got, I, I never got the sick. I never got the flu flu. And I told myself I would, just wasn't going to do, I wasn't going to go through this. It wasn't in my reality. It wasn't needed. Within a couple, like two days, I started feeling better. But I've watched other people go through this flu. And recently you started feeling it coming on, come on, you know. So how did you keep from getting the flu when you felt it come on? Well, first off, I'd like to say that, um, you know, I walked into an area to where everyone had it. Where were and you? Where were you? I was at a hospital. Yes. I ended up at, you know, there was something that took place in my in my personal family that ended, you know, took me to the hospital that actually took me back to the hospital, not for my own personal self, but for different family members. Um, and the flu was, you know, everyone was wearing masks and, you know, hand sanitizing and whatever. Well, um, I didn't wear a mask and I didn't, I, you know, I don't like nothing on my face, number one. <laughs> so, you know, I, I didn't do what everybody else was doing and I was just observing, you know, sometimes I can just kind of float in somewhere and just not really get the fact that, hey, um, there's like a disease up in here, you know, because I'm not seeing the disease. I'm seeing, oh, why does she feel like she's got to do that? Or, you know, I'm, I'm analyzing what the behavior patterns, not the, um, what's actually, is this virus that is airborne or, you know, doesn't even have a form unless you put it underneath the microscope. Okay. So (laughs) I noticed that there was one particular thing that happened that in a human illusion, you would have caught it. There's no way. Um, and it was the area that I was in, what I touched, you know, th- that type thing without getting too graphic about it. So several days later, um, all of a sudden, I started having these signs of maybe getting the flu. I mean, I've had the flu, you know, years ago, so I know how it feels. You, you know, you're, it's, it's just not very comfortable and it's just, it's just gross. So... I felt it coming on. Well, this was right in the middle of me understanding how to change the polarity of the air in which I reside. So instead of, you know, um, it's kind of like when you put those uh, air shocks on your vehicle so it's not bouncing on the terrain if you go across rocks. You know, all these vehicles, our cars and trucks have, have shocks on on that, make it a smoother ride. You know, so you don't have to feel every single bump that the car is actually making. The shocks actually absorb that movement, okay? So it's using all of that um, mathematical equations of how and then because my in my original question of what polarity did Jesus or what portion did Jesus hold of divinity to have done the things he did the stories whether it was you know real or not real that's irrelevant it was the stories that were told the messages that were left for us to look at in his words in what he says how he healed you know instantaneous healing um you know some of the stuff it was just it was miracles so how did he do that and how did he not catch it and how did he not give it to somebody else and how did it not kill him that was my, you remember when I went through that whole phase of mm-hmm. trying to understand the balance of how he did that. Well, I figured it out because when that flu started coming on, I was reminded of 
all the different situations that I put myself in, you know, I embodied and I put myself, uh, instead of like, instead of it coming into me, I took myself into it. I felt the way it felt and you know, I brought it back and then I tried it. You know, I would, I was, I was basically playing with it to see what I could possibly do. And so at this moment, I thought, oh, my stomach's sounding kind of weird. There's some, something's going on here. And so I just changed the air. I just changed the air. Um, that, un- that knowledge is in each and every individual on this planet. So by what I, the digging that I had done, I had picked up those codes, those clues, that understanding, and laid it, it was laid over the knowledge. And when those two came together, all of a sudden, I just had that ability that the air around me was changed, and I did not have another symptom. It okay. immediately stopped. All right, Sonia. I love you, but you're going to have to explain a little bit more. <laughs> what, what does it mean by changing the air? In, in the in okay, in terms so, that we can understand. Okay, so any light worker out there understands the different uh, bodies of like you know the etheric body, the physical body, the your, your aura. Aura, work field, mm-hmm. all the different layers. Okay, well the only way that anything can penetrate the physical body is if it goes through those mm-hmm. fields. Okay, so when you make you change the polarity of your auric fields to match that of the polarity of a, an energy that carries um, instantaneous healing or, you know, that, that, perfection. Balance, that balance of perfection, then when you can match that energy in your auric field, all you have to do is watch what happens around you to see. You can kind of gauge it. You can gauge it. And anybody out there that's listening to me can get this because that's how we created. It's something, it's, 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 it's one of our natural abilities like riding a bicycle. Okay, so it's kind of getting back into the feel of it again. But I, now I'm going to change the air instead of, and the air resides outside of our auric field. So there's this space there that what you can manipulate because you are the creator God. So this space, you start manipulating this space and you let it breathe in and out to this point to where you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't forget how to ride this bicycle. Oh my gosh, I got this. I got this going on. And all of a sudden, the symptoms disappear that were in that had actually penetrated the body by touching, feeling, or whatever. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you you kind of breathe it in and out to where it becomes, uh, it it didn't happen like that for me. I was just able to change it because of all the research and all the digging, all the, not really research, but like going into the different layers of history and looking at the individual and what did I want out of this one and what did I want out of that one. I don't want that at all. But I'm going to own it anyway. I own it so I can remove it. If I own it, I can remove it. If it's hideous and I own it, if, if my vacuum cleaner is full, I own that vacuum cleaner. If all the dirt and crap that I've vacuumed up is inside of that little ca- case, what am I going to do with it? Am I going to hold on to it? Am I going to put it in a Ziploc bag and save it? No. I'm going to dump it and throw it in the trash and it's going to leave this house. Or I wouldn't have ever vacuumed up to begin with. So if I own every negative thing on this planet, then I can remove it out of my existence. I can remove it out of my aura. I can re- then I can remove it out of the next space and the next space. So then my aura becomes a larger space and that anyone that walks into my aura has to meet the polarity because they have divine in them my division, my portion of divinity on the that particular subject or whatever is going to be larger. It becomes a magnet and then theirs, at their free will, can change it. So they say, by faith you are healed, by faith of knowing that no matter what, each individual has a spark of divinity and that spark of divinity can be enhanced to perfection. And don't let anybody tell you any different. It's the truth. Well, I can't wait to see the magic 
that happens <laughs> when we get all this 80 people together. Um, even if we don't, even if we don't end up having 80 people, however many people we have at this conference, it's going to be one of the, one of the, the, the most magnificent conferences I've ever held because it, it, I have stood in the space of my higher self, uh, in the last conferences and I've held the hands of the people that were there and we've done some amazing healing work together and we have sent out that healing work into the collective consciousness, but to have a conference where we're going to all stand in divinity and we're going to own it. And, you know, we're going to, um, we're going to then reflect that to each one of us, uh, well, yes, and grow it's that. time to claim our inheritance. You know, um, why, if you, if someone left you, um, something very special and, but it belonged to you, it belongs to you. And then someone else left, say Greg, or they left, you know, any, anyone put any name on it. If it belongs to you and it's got your name on it, why can't you have it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every single face on this planet, every single, every single organism that is a body can claim their inheritance. And the moment they claim it, it's theirs. That's all they have to do is say, you know what? I am not weak. I am not fragile. Stand I up. I am strong. Claim. That's I right. Am well. I, am I am perfect. Strong. Grab your inheritance and take it and use it to create, not to create, but to transform that creation into something that you desire, not what somebody else tells you you need or you, you should have or you want. Now, if you want to stay sick, who am I to tell you what to do? That's your own, that's your own ball game. I, I, I'm not trying to tell anybody that what they're doing is wrong. I'm sharing how I am changing the reality in which I reside, period. And if I can assist someone into understanding how they can do that for their own individual selves, I would love to because it is such a miraculous thing. Yes, it is. And with that, we're going to end this show. And I appreciate you coming on. And Oh, thank um, you for having me again. We're, again, we're going to be at the uh, Cosmic Convergence Conference March 2nd and third here in Sarasota, Florida. Go to CosmicAwakeningShow.com for more information or tickets. Anyone who'd like to uh, reach Sonia can do so um, through one of my websites. I have contact forms on all the websites that I mentioned at the beginning of this show and I will also have them listed in the comment section at, uh, below in the video. So um, other than that, uh, thank you so much, Sonia, and uh, we oh, will thank you again. We'll be talking soon. It's been fun. Everyone.